This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God Written by David Hofmeister And read by Tarana Singh In today's episode we continue unlearning the world with book 2 In chapter 7 This is section 5 Part 1 Freedom is of the mind Not the body Part 1 David Let's read from the section called The Light of the Holy Relationship Do you want freedom of the body or of the mind? For both you cannot have Which do you value? Which is your goal? For one you see as means the other, end. And one must serve the other and lead to its predominance, increasing its importance by diminishing its own. Means serve the end. And as the end is reached, the value of the means decreases, eclipsed entirely when they are recognized as functionless. No one but yearns for freedom and tries to find it. Yet he will seek for it where he believes it is and can be found. He will believe it is possible of mind or body and he will make the other serve his choice as means to find it. Text chapter 22 Section 6 Now that is pretty clear and simple. It fits right into the metaphysics. The world was made up for the mind to run away from pure abstract light, abstract oneness and hide in specifics, identified with form. The purpose was to forget dissociate from the light and even forget about the mind. As I was growing up, I remember a lot of talk about brains and bodies, about the concrete and about form. But there was not a lot of discussion of mind. Mind and thoughts were hazy vague kinds of things to talk about. This paragraph helps put that into perspective. Which do you value? And where do you want your freedom? Do you want freedom of the body or freedom of the mind? They are mutually exclusive in that whichever one you decide on is going to be your value. It is going to be your freedom. Whichever one you decide brings freedom, you will automatically pursue as your end. And you will use the other one as a means to reach the end. You could say, I was sleeping all those years spent in college. All the education, all of the skills and abilities we learn with our mind. If they are seen as the means, then the end is the body. The end is to buy bigger, better things for the body. To shelter it in better ways. To to provide more conveniences and comforts for it, using the mind as the means. Which do you want? Do you want to be in a free and open mind? To do so, you have to let the body be the means. Here's a companion paragraph from the I Need Do Nothing section. You still have too much faith in the body. 
as a source of strength. What plans do you make that do not involve its comfort or protection or enjoyment in some way? This makes the body an end and not a means in your interpretation. And this always means you still find sin attractive. No one accepts atonement for himself who still accepts sin as his goal. Text chapter 18, section 7 It always gets back to the interpretation. How do I perceive the body? As long as I perceive the body as the end, I am misperceiving it and sin is still attractive. That might seem to be a big stretch. Why is it that if I see my body as an end, then I find sin attractive? How does that connect? A paragraph in the Manual for Teachers will help bring that connection into focus. He points to how the body is the focal point of all of the things of this world. It takes great learning both to realize and to accept the fact that the world has nothing to give. What can the sacrifice of nothing mean? It cannot mean that you have less because of it. There is no sacrifice in the world's terms that does not involve the body. Think a while about what the world calls sacrifice. Power, fame, money, physical pleasure. Who is the hero to whom all these things belong? Could they mean anything except to a body? Yet a body cannot evaluate. Manual for Teachers, Section 13 In a worldly sense, power, fame, money and physical pleasure are all rooted in the body. That is what all the striving is about. Trying to get ahead, trying to move up in the world, trying to get more than the next person. You could throw the term intelligence in here too. In the sense that although it is a mental thing, it is tied into self-image. Politicians talk about the need to sacrifice for future generations. Just notice all the ways that sacrifice comes in. There is a belief that there is a benefit to sacrifice. But if you listen to the speeches, it always has to do with better money, better jobs and better living quarters for the body. Here is the key point. Could they mean anything except to a body? Yet a body cannot evaluate. He rules out the body because it is simply a learning device. The body just responds to the intentions of the mind. Bodies do not judge. Bodies do not evaluate. Bodies do not learn. They do not even react. They are simply told to react. Like a robo or a puppet responding to the intentions of the mind. Now we shift to the mind. By seeking after such things the mind associates itself with the body, 
obscuring its identity and losing sight of what it really is. Manual for Teachers, Section 13 There is our key sentence. That is why making the body an end makes sin attractive. Once again, the natural condition of the mind and the true identity is pure spirit. It is purely abstract. There is no form connected with it at all. But once the mind starts associating with the body and with form, with the finite, it starts to seek outside of itself. It believes it has thrown away its eternal home, its external identity, and it is going to cling and attach onto that which is finite. The next sentence is the kicker. Once this confusion has occurred, it becomes impossible for the mind to understand that all the pleasures of the world are nothing. But what a sacrifice! And it is sacrifice indeed. All this entails. Now has the mind condemned itself to seek without finding, to be forever dissatisfied and discontented, to know not what it really wants to find. Manual for Teachers, Section 13 In this profound confusion, the mind is completely turned around and twisted because it is identifying with something it is not. In doing so, it completely discards all remembrance of its natural state. Where freedom of the body has been chosen, the mind is used as means whose value lies in its ability to contrive ways to achieve the body's freedom. Yet freedom of the body has no meaning, and so the mind is dedicated to serve illusions. This is a situation so contradictory and so impossible that anyone who chooses this has no idea of what is valuable. Yet even in this confusion, so profound it cannot be described, the Holy Spirit waits in gentle patience. As certain of the outcome as he is sure of his Creator's love. He knows this mad decision was made by one as dear to his Creator as love is to itself. Text Chapter 22, Section 6 Who has not experienced this? This has been our whole lives. Now he is telling us it is all backwards? But he is also telling us that the Holy Spirit is in the mind and he has great patience. Be not disturbed at all to think how he can change the role of means and end so easily in what God loves and would have free forever. But be you rather grateful that you can be the means to serve his end. This is the only service that leads to freedom. To serve this end, the body must be perceived as sinless. Because the goal is sinlessness. The lack of contradiction makes the soft transition from means to end as easy as is the shift from hate to gratitude before forgiving eyes. 
You will be sanctified by your brother. Using your body only to serve the sinless. And it will be impossible for you to hate what serves whom you would heal. Text chapter 22, section 6 We will continue with the concluding part of this section in tomorrow's episode.